Uh, go ahead and get started. Let's we'll call the uh, first meeting of the Lowndes County Democratic Party 2018 to order. And uh, let's see everybody here. If you would, uh, I'm going to ask you to stand with me and observe a moment of silence. Our flag is over in the corner here, so we'll do a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Good to see you. Bright, young, smiling faces. Oh, father at school today. I'm sorry. There's that. First day back to school this morning, so it was uh, a very interesting day today. <laughs> Try to get everybody reprogrammed. Um, did uh, uh, everyone get a copy of the minutes from last meeting? Anyone need a copy? Places. When the people come to the polling places, we can look at the 
find where you're sick, what what street you live at, and see if you're in the right area if it's time for you to go. So I think we need to uh, kind of work on that. I know we have been working on trying to get people to get out to go. Every case when we have the women there and so forth. And also I would like to see the Democratic Party more fundraisers. We kind of need to kind of get a little bit more visible or something like that. Um, I haven't been that active as I want to be, but I'm, I'm planning on doing that. We kind of need to let you know, be heard a little bit more, some kind of way, raise funds, do something. Even if we just get on the street, maybe hold a sign. Democratic Party is alive. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but that's what we're going to do. And I also, I'll admit all the supporters, I appreciate you. I appreciate your votes. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you being, just being Democrat and even what else? That's, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. We certainly appreciate everything you do uh, uh, on city council and also in our community, um, feeding, feeding the folks that need to be fed uh, uh, daily out on the south side uh, and, and just uh, being a, a steward of our tax dollars and making sure that it's properly spent and not wasted. And, uh, we're very proud to have you as our city council person. Um, we got a couple of guests with us tonight, and I'm going to ask them to, um, to, to, to address us. I'm going to first uh, um, ask uh, my co, uh, I guess you call him a colleague, since he's the chairman of the Thomas County Democratic Party. So, uh, Mark, if you would, uh, take the floor and tell us a little bit about what's going on with Thomas and special projects you guys got going on. Similar, but it, it could include a march as well. Um, 
I'm sure you could, you could go online and find out. But on the website? Yeah, I think if you just called up out of the polls, and, and uh, it'll, I think it'll give you options as to what's the closest place to you. But you could look at the, for the Jacksonville one, and it should have all kinds of information there about it. What's it on the website again? Power to the polls. Power to the polls. I think it's on that sheet there. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. All right. Thank you, Mark. Um, most of us know that uh, Amy Carter uh, was our rep, uh, one of our reps. Uh, she represented District 175 uh, in, uh, in the state legislature. And Amy has stepped down in that seat now vacant. Um, Amy first ran for that seat as a Democrat. And, uh, yeah, and uh, she decided to switch over to become a Republican. And, uh, she serves several terms as a Democrat. She serves several terms as a Democrat, that's correct. But uh, now that seat's vacant. And uh, for a while, we was worried. Richard kept asking us if we were going to get anybody to run, if we were going to get anybody to run. Well, um, uh, I think it was Saturday, I believe, I got a phone call. That's how I knew Jordan was going to be Oklahoma. Because I had to <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, talk to you guys sometimes. But anyway, I got a phone call. And uh, the person on the other end introduced herself to me and said, uh, you're going to be a candidate for the vacant 175 district seat. And I said, well, you know, we got a meeting Monday. And if your schedule will permit, we would love to have you come over and, and uh, speak to us and tell us a little bit about yourself so we can get, get to know you a little bit better. And uh, uh, I was just thrilled to death that uh, not only did we have somebody who wants to run, but somebody who wants to run as a Democrat, and somebody who's in the education field because, you know, the governor's still trying to do his thing about taking over uh, the school systems and things of that nature. So uh, to have somebody who's vibrant and who's energetic and who has a grasp of what our needs are educationally in our, in our part of the state uh, is a plus for us. So I'm going to introduce, and I hope I remember the name right, and uh, if I do make the mistake, just uh, chop it up to older age. <laughs> I'm George. I'm George, yeah. So I'm, I'm having a, a, a moment. But uh, Ms. Gear? Yes, right. Oh, that's right. Yes, that's right. Well, thank y'all for having me this evening. Uh, okay. it's, very, it's nice to meet you all. Um, my name is Trina Gear. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you I'm a native. I, I live in Brooks County. I've lived there for 11 years. I live right on the edge, you know, right there down from uh, 133 down from Truthville Road. And uh, I'm a native of Adel, Georgia. And I was a horn at Cook County Four, you know. So I'm um, yeah. King Frog, Adel baby. So, uh, yes. So, but um, I started working with the Lyons County School System back in 2006. And by the way, I can't forget my vet, my, my Army time, because I'm an Army veteran. I served as a medic in the Army. And so uh, I did that after graduating from DSU. I decided, my mom was like, are you crazy? Why are you going to the Army now? So I did. It was a great experience. I was happy to serve my country. And uh, so after working out in the regular, just working uh, at the hospital at South Jersey Medical Center as a phlebotomist, I decided I need to go back in the education field and put this degree to use. And so I started the Lyons Alternative School in 2006, worked there about two years. I started teaching in special education. So I, at this point, I, and, and then I taught, I taught special education for seven years or so and then went on over to the high school after the second year. And I've been teaching with Lowndes now. I've been with Lowndes for 11 years. Um, I taught everything else in pre-AP courses and taught mainly biology and physical science. So I've got to see the, the vast spectrum of different types of students, students who are learning needs, <coughs> students who are, are, get, you know, are gifted. And so I, that's been a great experience for me to see that great dynamic of different students in the school. So um, that's just some, those, those are some basic things about me. Uh, I'll go on to tell you why I decided to run. Uh, I've been sitting looking because I work at Lyons High School, as I said, and like I said, I was teach I was a teacher, I was a teacher in biology and physical science. And then the opportunity came two years ago to become the instructional coach. I'm the first 
an instructional coach uh, Lowndes High School has had in history. So I'm the first. So I got the paving away, so I was excited about that. Uh, not the, go ahead, sir. What is an instructional coach? Oh, an instructional coach, I do the professional learning for the teachers. Like I tell I teach the teachers. Okay. I provide oh, individual good. coaching. Um, I provide, provide I schedule professional learning experience. Like today was a professional learning day, so it was a really long day. And so I get to do some one-on-one, -on -one, support them where they need it so they can be better for the students. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, I, I enjoy the role. I miss the students, but I do things in the school, so I still stay connected to those students as well. Not to mention, I kind of went into that position because I got my doctor two years ago in adult <coughs> year ed. So then came, with, came the promotion, which was a blessing, and I was happy to have it. So now here I am. It's 2017, and it's November, and I find out, wow, Amy Carter has resigned effective December 31st. Well, I have been looking at that position for a long time saying, when is somebody going to run against them? When is somebody going to run? And so with the current state of the nation right now and all the things that are going on, you know, it's one thing to sit in, at, the, at the TV and watch the daily news, uh, breaking news pieces in the headlines, and say, well, you know what, how, how, how are we going to change anything? So I was like, you know what, if I want to if if change, I'm going to have to step out. I'm going to have to step out and be that change. So I started looking, and I started, I called Representative Sharper, and I was like, hey, is anybody running? Y'all have anybody? But first, there were other people in my circle who were thinking about doing it too, but they couldn't do it. They couldn't, they couldn't run. And uh, so I, he put me in contact with the right people. I called up that land. I talked to them. They said, we got one person here thinking about it, but I don't know in a week. I said, well, I'm just thinking. I just had to call you. So, come to find out, they, they, um, they weren't going to run because I wasn't going to run against another Democrat because we need to get somebody here in this seat. Yeah. So, um, I started, that, I had been praying about it and wondering, you know, like, take this cup from me, but somebody had to do it. So then I said, you know what? I'll do it. I'll do it. Because I want to see some change in District 175. I look at how the district had been gerrymandered. And in a sense, after around about 2010, 2011, after this, the 2010 census, and how they pulled all those communities in and pulled the more affluent ones to kind of undermine the vote in the middle, and how some of the people, the working class, have been underserved by in the, in the current state with the current representatives because they were overshadowed, they weren't thriving, portions were thriving, and the other ones were being deprived. So it's time for us to pay attention to those people in those Brooks County areas, in those rural areas, not those who live in those affluent communities on either side. Um, a big thing I have a concern with about the well-being of people. So then you, I look at education. I look at uh, health care. I look at the fact that um, looking at a working wage for our people, people being able to work. If you work 40 hours a week, you should be able to make a, have a comfortable living and provide for your family. Mm -hmm. When you can't do that, that's a concern. And that's the state of, that's, what, that's what's going on right now. When we look at uh, education, we constantly talk about, you know, we always come up with kind of like a smear campaign against public schools. They aren't doing enough. But then you need to provide us with what we need in order to do all the things we need to do. You can't inundate us with, uh, with high stakes testing, even when the federal government has re relieved us of some of that. But we continue to test our students excessively. So you think about a kid coming from kindergarten, going all the way to 12th grade, and they've been tested so many times. So what does a test mean to them anyway? The anxiety, the stress, it's not their true performance. It's because they're stressed out that some students don't perform well. And also, why are we expecting students who start off at a different point to actually reach? If, if, I, didn't have this, if I didn't have the same beginning, how can I reach that same point as another student? Students who are in poverty, their brains develop differently. It's delayed because of experiences they didn't have at the beginning, but yet the state expects them to score as well on the EOC at the same point, it's going to take them a little bit longer, longer to catch up. So what are we doing to, to address those students? We shouldn't catch them at the end. And so then we, we have campaigns like uh, Go Build Georgia. Well, that's great, and that's wonderful, because the average age of one of our plumbers today is 53. You know, so uh, do we have people going into plumbing? Those are fields that are important, because it was this push to send every student to college. But every student doesn't need to go to college. There's things that... Uh, at the technical college level that those are some of the fastest growing professions are there with these simple certification. So why have a student go to college? But for those who want to go, there should also be a bridge to get them there as well. Um, so us provide career development in our schools and the, the state funding that and helping students, all students to actually get there. So when I even look at um, education in terms of um, getting to college, the HOPE scholarship is merit-based. So that means your most affluent students 
who make under that, that maximum salary are still going to have access to college, whereas your student who grew up in a different setting started, they didn't get the, that 10-yard that, uh, that start at the finish line. They had to start at it or behind the finish, the, I mean that starting line. How are they going to get there? So they never get the access to the scholarship money nor, nor anything else. So they have to depend on loans and they might not finish college. So Because now the average time the student spends, spends in college about six or seven years if they finish and then they might drop out because they can't afford it and then they have loans. So things to look at there. And if we educate our students and we educate and we pour into students and pour into education and, and not just K through 12 but after, you know, it's like you're um, your 12 plus plan, getting those students through school, then you could then then businesses can benefit, but businesses can't benefit and just on, on the backs of people working minimum wage because we haven't valued the human capital. We need to value the human capital that we have. And we need to have a, a higher minimum wage. But those are some of the things and just the tip of the iceberg uh, <coughs> issues that I that, that are important to District 175. Um, in terms of transportation, I'll just say, you know, why don't we have a transit system? You know, not just the Southwest region, Georgia Regional Transit System, Albany has one. VSU is a great model for a transit system. So why, if, if I live in rural, if I live in equipment, I can't necessarily access the best job because I live in equipment, I don't have a car. So you limit me to my current state because I don't have that luxury of a vehicle. Or I can't go to um, Wiregrass Technical College or VSU because I really need to live at home. I can't, come, you know, I. I need to commute, but I don't have a vehicle. Well, if there was a transit system, then you could get those individuals where they need to get to so they can get great jobs. So those, those are just some of the bigger issues I'm, I'm looking at that affect people, their well-being, because you know, if one part of our district is hurting, the whole district is hurting. It's just like you're, you're, um, you're only as, as strong as your weakest link. So if we start supporting all people, business will flourish, the economy will flourish, and we'll all prosper. Where do we donate? Well, where do you donate? There's not anything online right now. But if you write a check or anything, it's the committee to elect Treva here. Could you spell your last, first and last name for us? Treva. T is in Tango. R is in Romeo. E is in Echo. V is in Victor. Victor. A is in Alpha. Okay. Um, and gear, like a gear. G-E-A-R. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm the fifth gear, actually. <laughs> I'm the youngest of uh, I'm the youngest of my yeah. Four, four, I have four other older siblings. I was a surprise baby. I was that bonus baby. Oh, yeah. that was baby. Do you have an email address? Yes, I do. Would you mind giving it? Ty Gear at two. Um, I mean Ty Gear two thousand five at gmail .com. Okay. Is there an address we should send checks to? Yes, you can send it to forty one Antler. Antler Lane, like a like a deer antler, yes. Antler Lane, Valdosta, three one six zero two. Treva, could you say that again, please? All right, that's a forty one antler, like deer antlers. Antler Lane, Valdosta, three one six zero two. Got it. Yes, sir. Can this be put on the local website? I don't. I don't know who does that. And all this information we put on them? Yes, yes it can be. <laughs> when you're talking about education, where do you think I get our problems start from? From my experience, I think it started with lower grades, like kindergarten and pre-K up into first grade. Yes, sir. If a kid don't get it by first grade, it's hard for them to catch up. And I'm finding a lot of the kids, when they get to third, they can't read and they get upset and have an attitude. And when we start trying to um, I think we spend too much money on the upper grades and not getting the foundation first. The football. <laughs> yes. The football. <laughs> exactly. If you don't get that, you know, and right now, because they're testing that they're third year, I think it's just the third year, I think. And they put a lot of energy on those grades. But the kids, when they get there, they can't read. And down in the, the lower grades, I think that's what we need to put energy on. So what do you think about that? Well, 
I agree because if a student, if a kid can't read by grade three, they're they're likely they're most likely to drop out. They're most likely to end up in prison. Um, prisons build their they they build based on whether students you know in that population whether they can read at third at third grade level because then they kind of get passed over and passed over. I met a high school student. You got a high school student in eleventh and twelfth grade and the student can't read. You wonder how did they make it through all those grades? It happens and it's sad because it's like. We have failed them. How did they just ride all the way through and nobody talked them how to? And I will be angry too. And that's when they are because they. But if we catch them and put our, you're right, put our resources in on those younger grades, because if they can make it through third, if they can get that third grade reading level and they're on track, they 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 have a foundation to build upon. But without that third grade reading level, there's no foundation. It's just going to crumble and crash. And, and you know, um, the community got to get involved. The teachers can't do all this by themselves. Exactly. There is a lot of work for teachers right now. You know, a lot of kids come to school with uh, all kinds of emotional issues, a behavior issue, and then the teacher has to spend so much of our time trying to calm these kids down. Um, and we even had that at our church. Uh, we had a group of kids, a family actually, you know, and they were like little, little animals crawling under the pews and everything. And we saw the experiment that we gave them. We took the time and started working with them and showed them love so now they're, they're ushers and they're doing things in the church. Now, if you got a kid that live over near the Hunter Center, where that environment is real rough. And we can't just start to get the blame of parents or the young mothers. Single moms and poor kids is a hard job. So that's why I say the community got to get involved, help these kids out, they help these parents out. And I don't have kids, but I still look at kids that have been our kids. If we don't pay for them, we don't pay for them in the early ages. In our life, we're going to pay for them later. And it costs more to put them in jail. I keep saying it. It costs yes. more to put them in jail. Yes, yes. For some reason, yes. somewhere, somebody doesn't see that. Mm -hmm. And our politicians, I don't think they're doing too much to help our school system with that problem. You know? So I hope when you get there, you're going to make a difference in, you know, with our school system. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're doing books to pre-K kids mm -hmm. in Lowndes County. Mm -hmm. see, in Lowndes County? No, Lowndes County. Lowndes County. We provide books for over 20, almost 2,500 kids. Oh, that's good. Um, and I agree with you because what the, because what the state does is they're they're looking at these wraparound services they call them. But they don't come until they see that the school is in need or failing. That's that's not proactive. That's reactive, and that's not what's going to sustain right. growth and sustain learning for students at that grade level. I totally I totally agree with you. Anything else? Do you know who you're running against? Or who you're going to be running against? Uh, John the Hood. Oh, he, oh, that's the sign I see around. Yes. 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 So it's just two of you. It's the two of us. As far as I know, I heard another name in the mix, but I haven't seen anything else. So that is, is it qualifying only? No, no qualifying is Wednesday. And I will go up on Wednesday to qualify. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know his signs are all in there. Yes. So do you have any signs? No, I don't have any signs yet. You need yet. some money to get some money, don't you? Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> I'm starting a, a grassroots campaign, like seriously. Like I called and notified them what the day before, what Thursday before New Year's weekend, and said, hey, I'll go, I'll run. I'll run for the people, because it's for the people. Well, I didn't bring my checkbook, and I stole 20 bucks from my wife. I had to give it to you. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's all you stole? That's all you stole. Well, I appreciate y'all taking the time and allowing me this platform to share with you uh, my vision for and, and what I what I want to do for the people of District 175, which will ultimately hopefully have a positive impact across Georgia. I promise to send you more. Yes, ma'am. I would appreciate that. And what's your name? Norma Day. N-E-R-M-A. Oh, and Norma's military. And they can check to the baby to the leg. Treat it here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. No, no, nothing.
We certainly appreciate you coming. And, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, yeah, cool. giving us uh, your insight of what you plan to do. And uh, I think you're going to be a very viable candidate. And I think we, we have got to do our part. Yes. You know, I, I was just looking in the room here. And there are approximately 24 of us here. And if, if we just call 10 people and have those 10 people call 10 people, and have those 10 people call 10 people, we could swing this election our way. It's all about turnout. It's, it's all, all about, about driving people to the polls yeah, on we, the day. We have, we have got to do our part. Uh, Jim, want to talk about the... Uh, well, I just want to present uh, Ms. Gear, our thank her teacher sign as a teacher. Thank you. And uh, this is one of the things we're doing to support our, our teachers in uh, this area. <laughs> there you go. Would you like okay. All right, um, Dennis is going to talk about the, uh, the elections. Okay, uh, as you just heard, we've got a special election coming up, uh, District 175 in the Georgia, Georgia House. Uh, the district takes the west edge of Lowndes, Lowndes County, all of Brooks County, and the eastern half of Thomas County, which is why we're delighted to have the chair of Thomas County Democrats with us, with us tonight. Uh, the qualifying for this is going to take place uh, in the state capitol, because this is the, 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 the state seat, uh, from 9 to 5 on Wednesday and Thursday, and then from 9 to noon on, on Friday. So by the end of the week, we're going to know all the candidates who have qualified for the for the election. We're delighted to have the Democrat money for the, the position, so thank you, thank you very, very much. Uh, Early voting uh, starts on January 22nd. It's coming up fast. Fast. Okay. It's going to start on January 22nd. Oh, elections should be like this. Yeah. Okay. It's going to. It's going to be. It's going to be from eight to five that week. Eight to five the following week. There's going to be Saturday. Saturday voting on Saturday, February the third, uh, from nine to nine to four. Uh, and then the last week of early voting, 7-7, seven to seven, uh, all of the early voting in Lowndes County is in the Board of Elections office. Then there will be similar ones in Brooks and uh, Thomas, Thomas County. Uh, the last day to register to vote is January the 16th. So if there's anybody who is not registered to vote, today is the 8th. Okay, so we're talking about next Tuesday. Martin Luther King holiday is on Monday, so the last day to vote is on Tuesday of next week. The last day to register to vote. So if you know folks who are not registered to vote, get them registered, then let's get out and vote early. Get those votes in the, in the bank. Make sure we get as many people as possible to the, to the polls. Uh, we're delighted that we have an office manager in our office. We've got a permanent office. Uh, you'll, you'll remember on, Sl on Slater Street, uh, 1008 Slater Street. Dolores Perry is our office manager. Uh, she's there every week. If you want to help in the office, please volunteer to Dolores so that we've got the office covered uh, during, the, during the election. And we will then meet uh, people on election day uh, to help with rides to the, to the polls. If you want to volunteer for rides to the polls, uh, please see me. Uh, that election day is Tuesday, February the 13th. So in five weeks, this is going to be over. It's a very fast election. Uh, Amy Carter announced her resignation effective uh, the end of the year, December 31st. That's why the governor couldn't set the date and announce it until after her term, term was over and the position was vacant. Uh, so we need to move quickly on this. We need to get people registered to vote, out to the polls, vote. This is a special election. Turnout is absolutely critical. Special elections have low voter turnouts yep. because of that. Every vote really makes a difference. You saw what happened in Virginia. That district came down to one vote. We need to get people out. Vote. Vote early. This isn't Chicago, so I didn't say vote early and often. But please, get the votes voting early. Get these votes in. Okay? So we've got our work cut out for us. 
Could you just quickly repeat those times for early voting? Early, early voting the, uh, is going to start on January the 22nd. <clears throat> Monday to Friday of that week from 8 to 5. Monday to Friday the following week from 8 to 5. On Saturday, February 3rd from 9 to 4. And then the last week of early voting, February 5th to 9th, uh, 7 to 7. All of that in the Board of Elections office. So let's let's get people voting. Will early. Brooks and Thomas have the same early voting schedule, or is theirs different? Uh, I think theirs will be different. That's set by the Director of Elections, Supervisor of Elections for each, each county. Do you know anything about the Supervisor of Elections in Brooks County? Uh, I do not. Mark, you can contact your supervisor and let you know how this is going to be sent to us. We'll send those to us. And do um, the Board of Election have the flyers like they usually do about the election and stuff like that? Hey, Cindy? Do the Board of Election have the flyers like they usually do? Uh, yeah. Okay. The flyers are on the Board of Elections counter. Okay. okay. And uh, they, um, I I don't know whether that's going to come out after qualifying finishes on Friday. Okay, qualifying is this week. What's the, what's the district again? Can you give us a yeah, the, 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 district, the district is the 170, 175th. The best way to find out what district you're in is go to my voter page. Okay, just Google Georgia GA, my voter page. And if you go to my voter page, my voter page, you just put in your first initial and your last name, Lowndes County, and your date of birth. It will come back and tell you uh, what precincts you're in for both local and, and state elections, and where your polling station is, and it will give you a link for a sample ballot so you can see who's going to be on the ballot. Everybody should know that my voter page. Yes. Yes. I want to ask a four stop question. Yeah. Um, 175 district. Yeah. If we're not in that district, we still can vote for her. No, no, no. You have to. You have to be in that district. I don't need to vote. Uh, no, but you do need to get all of your friends who do well in that district. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still need to. So we need to it's essentially the slice of Lowndes no, County, no, which is west of I-75. It's not much of Lowndes County in the district. Oh, west, west of I-75, except at the extreme north and south end of the county. I mean, you got to look at the map. Okay? We'll go to my voter page and, and find out find out what what district you're in. Yes. This young lady has a um, question. I love it. <laughs> yes, Carol. Oh no, I, I mean I've never done this before, but how do you find out if people are registered and how do you get them registered? Uh, again, 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 go to my voter page. They can put in their and or you can put in their name and Lowndes County and. Um, it can be done on, online? Yes, yes, just, just do it online. Any computer will work. Okay? And if, if they're not registered to vote, if they're not in the Secretary of State <coughs> database, okay, then they're not registered to vote. Yeah. Okay? And at that point, the uh, quickest thing to do is just, well, you can register them online, or you can take them to the Board of Elections Office. And they need their driver's license to be able to register. You have to be a Georgia resident. Yes, you have to be a Georgia resident. Or, Dr. Bob, you don't mind me. Hi, Dermot. Yes. Or either if you want to be a person to register somebody, that's a contact board of election, and they have like maybe an hour course where they'll take you through it, and they'll certify you, and then you're able to take the package, which you will, you go, you just, more like, uh, do like a little form say, I'm going to be at such and such place on this date. So therefore, nobody can not say that you're illegally registering people to vote. So they will certify you. But say, anybody can register themselves on their own computer. They can just go to the website and register themselves. Yeah. But she also asked, see how can she go about registering people? Yeah. Or, you know, just reach out. They actually have an app which I put on my phone when I was running. 
that uh, you, you can do it on the phone or you can go from house to house. And uh, what's that app called? It's called Peach. Uh, is it called Peach Voters? GA Votes. Yeah. GA Votes. Yeah. And, and, any, any and it's a fantastic app and it's easy to use. I, I think you have to have the browser pass it down. Yeah. Some type of person, the person who registers to vote has to have government yeah. certified to vote, right? Yeah. So some type of government ID that they would need to talk to. So it's not yeah. like to be in front of others to register. A lot of them are kind of shy. Yeah. You know, where they, they think that you're asking a whole bunch of information so they won't see each other. But if you set up like a little area, you know, like myself, I'll give some people also register. And we'll go to certain communities, but we'll get permission from you know, uh, I'm just going to use, for example, I always say, like, uh, Oregon West. We'll speak to a housing director and who's that the facilitator. We'll speak with them to help us uh, set up a date when we can use an outside facilitator inside. And we'll have kids assist us, so us community center, and we'll pass our flyers to have dates for the people, level, you know, in the hours that we can use. In an election like this, Getting new voters registered is not the most important thing. Getting the currently registered voters to go and vote in the special is way more yes. important. And I have, I have voters bill, so I can print out. I have access to the vote builder. Yeah, vote builder. Okay, go thank ahead. you. Oh, you have the list. Oh, just get them out. I call for an office. I call for an office, and the number will show that is the Democrat office, so to be better response. Let me give you my number. That'll be faster. Oh, you, you have the number for this you do, don't you? Okay, and, and what if is? anybody wants to help call registered voters, please get with Dolores, go to the office, get a, get the list from Vote Builder, uh, and then just get on your own cell oh, phone so and call call potential voters. Okay, this, is, a, this is the only election that's going on at this point, so this is nice and focused. And it's just getting everybody in the one okay, here it is. That's the office out number. to vote. And sell. I'll drive. Thank you. Thank you. I have three questions. Look at him. Three questions. The first one is, did I hear correctly that the last day of early voting is February 9th and the election day is February 13th? That's correct. Okay. And first Monday of the month being February 8th, would that be when we're having the no. next party meeting? Yes. No, no, that no, wouldn't be. No, it's it's the the, yeah, the first Monday is can't be the eighth. It's the fifth. It's the fifth. Okay, the first Monday is February fifth. Right. So next monthly meeting is February fifth, which is before the election actually is finished. So would it be safe to say the topic for that meeting would be get out the vote for the Democrat in the special What's election? That? You got it. I think so. I see the chair nodding his head. So I'll take that as the topic and go ahead and yes, vote yes. the meeting. <laughs> Without yep. objection. Thank you. We, we could also use that meeting yes. to phone back. Yes, we could. Yes. That phone back. Without objection. Sure could. Okay. That's all three of your questions. Well, I did have a fourth question. Thank you, David. I should have asked. Okay, um, if we're going to phone back, perhaps maybe we should actually meet at the party office. We do that. Uh, there's another reason I mentioned that. Have you looked at the health department inspection grades? For this restaurant? It's one of the two that got the worst grades. Uh, yes, in yes, the yes that's true. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, all, all will kill you your fat, you so. <laughs> okay, uh, membership. There are membership applications on the back table back there. Uh, yeah, I mean, we just ran off another two dozen. Uh, this is 2018. Take a membership form, pay your dues, and make a contribution vote. Please. Um, I like to get a, a, a account and see how our membership. I think our membership is actually growing. If you just by the participation of folks who come to our meetings. It's, that be indicated that uh, our membership is growing, and there are a lot of folks who are Democrats that uh, are just not broadcasting the Democrats. But um, we've seen lately in the state races in Virginia, and surprisingly, 
uh, what happened in Alabama with Doug Jones, um, what folks can do when they're in there. Yes, yes. So Georgia can be no different. We can get yes. uh, flip that 175 seat over to a, a Democrat that he can really uh, flip our whole state through if you just get energized and vote. It starts from getting folks active. Um, get out to vote. We talked about that a little bit. Um, we're going to skip on down to members who should be heard. Uh, anybody want to make any comments on the members who should be heard? Right now, uh, the county commission is going to appoint somebody to the hospital authority, and they don't have anybody, uh, they have no candidate. And so at the um, meeting this morning, the chairman said to the commissioners, so put the word out amongst your friends that we need somebody on the health department. Well, it shouldn't just be to the people that the commissioners know. It should be to anybody in the community. They're also appointing somebody to two people to the planning commission and uh, one person to uh, the Lowndes Development Authority, which is not the Lowndes or Lowndes Development Authority. It's the Lowndes Development Authority is the one that handles the bonds when other government fish, uh, entities like the hospital or the something want to get a bond. It goes through that thing. Um, and so it has one vacancy on that board also. And apparently they want to do something and they need to fill the seat. Um, those are going to be appointed tomorrow. So if you want to get on one of those, uh, like call up your county commissioner today and say, hey, I want to be considered to get me in there. Go call call Joyce or Scott or, or Clay or DeMarcus. What did you find? I was looking for I was at the meeting this morning at their work session. That's where they announced them. Okay. What are the requirements? Well, I'll talk to you after. <laughs> uh, uh, anyone else? Be I'm currently serving on the, uh, I was appointed by the city of Valdosta to serve on the, the, the Apple Authority Board. And uh, it, it's been a pleasure and I've gained some knowledge and, and I have so great. Yeah. Uh, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. And uh, um, we actually had a meeting this past night on the, uh, the number of people that we boarded in Valdosta, but believe it or not, it was over 17,000 people. So uh, if, if any of you are planning trips to, to any place, uh, we have charts that tell us that it's cheaper, in some cases, it's cheaper than Tallahassee, and it's cheaper than Jacksonville. But in order, in order for it to be cheaper, you have to book those flights at least 21 days in the yes. But uh, the airport is there, the parking is free, and, and I thoroughly enjoyed the point. It's also, oh, I'll be using it's that. It's also <laughs> out of and stay on Delta. When you get to Atlanta, mm -hmm. if you change carriers, <coughs> your ticket goes up. Yeah. 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 So if you fly Delta from here to New York yeah. straight or to Atlanta and then Delta to Atlanta, the ticket's cheaper than going to Tallahassee or Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. But if you change carriers in Atlanta, the ticket goes up. Okay, so one of the things we're currently trying to do, we're sending planes out here that are about 87% full. 
and uh, what we're working on, but we can keep that up and the possibility that we can get another carrier to come if we have the traffic, and that's what we're trying to do. But I don't think that uh, we have anything to be ashamed of with 17,000 people flying out there. Dennis? Uh, yeah, let me, let me thank Ms. Ms. Tooley and, and reiterate, serving on these boards and commissions is a great way to get involved, as Rhonda says, in public service without having to run for office. Uh, and the city does a wonderful job of advertising for these positions. Uh, the county does a horrible job of advertising for these positions. Uh, but if you live in the, in the city, please go to the city website. If you live in the, in the, in the county, please go with, with Gretchen. Uh, but it's, it, is, it is really important. This is, a way, this is a way to build our bench. This is a way to get some government experience. So please, please get involved in the community. Yes, ma'am. Um, this young lady is here to ask some questions and some concerns about her housing that she's staying. She's a widow of ten, 10 kids, 10 children. That's our oldest son here. And myself and some other people in the community have been talking about um, the different issues. But this is a serious issue that's all about her. Kim? Move that to have me. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Well, the house that I was staying in, um, I come from, I moved from Florida and I came here. And so I was um, put into this house and it is dealing with black hole, leaking water, can't use the kitchen. The only water source that we have is the, bath, the hallway bathroom water. And even though the take showers, we got a dump the water out and keep on plunging the water. Um, the landlord already know about the problem. Uh, I try to clean the windows when I moved in, and so I spray Windex and try to clean it off, and the windows just start falling off. Um, they know about that issue, but nothing has been done. Um, it's black mold throughout the house. Um, is roaches. It's fire roaches. Uh, the owner said that it has not been uh, any roaches there, but I have witnesses stating that that house was already there before I even moved in. Um, the guy came today and inspect, looked at the house. He, I don't even think he looked at the house. He was like, man, I just, I just fit, da 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 da, such 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 such. So then when we got outside, he said that, well, the owner might tell you you're going to have to move. So now, it's like, what do I do from here? I mean, I'm... She's up here. Get, get in touch with Jane Osborne. Uh, she can give you some, some help on housing. She's with the Homeless, homeless Coalition. Jane Osborne. I'll give you her contact information at the end. Okay. Well, you know, the problem, she's been homeless before. I want to say that she's been homeless before because she's been in this different community and she's in Florida and she ended up homeless again. She's been homeless for like two years. The homeless needs to stop. She needs a plan. I right. did take her to an agency and pray for me she'll get this house. But then again, then the money I get issue got to come up because I told her to pay the rent, keep the pay on me. And her church is very supportive. I met her through Gwen McQueen. So she's the Church of Christ and they the forestry and they very much help her out a lot. I want to say that that's how I found out about it. And um so the homeless gotta stop. She needs a place. Yeah, that's what the homeless coalition is doing is keeping her house. What's that? The homeless homeless coalition. Okay, and who's Jane Oswald. Yeah, that's what you're doing. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Anderson. Anyone else? Um, Bill Donaldson, you recognized uh, Saturday night at the Martin Luther King Jr. Commemorative Association's annual banquet. That's awesome. Uh, would you just tell us about the prestigious honor that was bestowed upon you? Well, <clears throat> As I said earlier, you know, I don't have kids, but I like Val Dawson, I like the people here. And I do all I can to try and help out. And my biggest thing is working around the people that need the help the most. 
I think a lot of times we get involved in helping our own kids and our own the circle. But to me, the people that need help is the one in the lower income. So it's like this young lady here, you know. Those people that need the help because we have kids. And, and, and that's what I like to see us do a better job at, working with them and people that need help. And all my experience tell me, especially my religious experience tell me, it's our job to help, especially the kids. we we got to help our kids. I don't care who the mother or father is. They need help. We need to have a system in our communities, our churches, and our government to help our young people. They need help. we we got to do it. I mean, you know the question I'm asking myself now? My generation, are we going to leave the kids in the same condition that moms came with? My generation is. That's the question I begin to ask myself. How good are we doing? What are we doing to help each other? Are we fighting to help um, underprivileged uh, people that need help? You know? And I think I think we can do a better job. Yeah. When a teacher thanks and thank me, I almost I almost feel guilty for it, you know. I didn't do enough, you know. Yeah. Well, and it's a good feeling to me. Your, your work is not going unnoticed. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, was, I was honored to see that the, the MLK Commemorative Association recognized you publicly and as chair of the Lyons County Democratic Party. I want to take a moment just to tell you that we recognize what you're doing. We appreciate you being who you are and what you're doing for our community. Thank you. Okay, uh, any old business or new business? Old business or new business? Besides blue dogs. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, upcoming events. Um, Dennis has basically covered all of these, I think. Uh, my next meeting will be February 5th. Um, we're going to meet at the office. Is that, is that the pleasure of the body? That we meet in the office? The Slate, 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 Slate Street office. Yeah. We, need a, we need a motion to do that. Does someone make a motion? I make a motion. Second. motion to properly second. We have our next meeting at our office on Slater Street to conduct a phone bank to help us get that 175 seat group. All right, all the papers say aye. Aye. All opposed, same side. Go ahead. Clean. So we need her people's numbers to call people. Yeah, we'll have them there that night. No, we'll have them tomorrow. We'll have them ahead of that if you want to get a list. Okay, I'll be there to help, but I'll be there to help. Okay. <laughs> All right. uh, anything else we can discuss? All right. Uh, vote to adjourn. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to say thank you so much. I appreciate your support and the ongoing support that I'll give from you. I really appreciate it. I feel, I don't feel like I'm like a small party of one now. <laughs> and if you did donate and you didn't give me a check, if you, I don't want to get in trouble with the Campaign Finance Commission. Right. So if you'll write your... Um, I got some index cards here. If you would just write your name, and maybe if you, yes, how much you know, how much you donated or whatever, that would be great. I um, appreciate that, and maybe and what your your occupation is. I think that's another thing to something. Here. Yeah, I don't want them coming after me. Oh, <laughs> teacher, teacher. <laughs> okay. what, needs, what needs to be on the index card is your name, address, employer, and profession. Name, address, employer, and profession. Uh, the address of the office on Slater Street is 1008 Slater Street. 1008. Okay. Does anybody else need a pen? All right. Now, now we need to we need to maintain order. Right. Left my gavel in my truck, but. All right. Now, uh, let's let's do this here, and then there's a motion. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. All right. So move. We can adjourn until. Thank you.